Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a psychological thriller film. What keeps you alive? Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. This horror movie opens to its viewers with tall trees. We will see a married lesbian couple traveling to a secluded lakeside cabin in the woods to celebrate their anniversary. The ambience is dark and mysterious. Its calm tone sets up the mood for the rest of the show. It is like a light pad on your back, without realizing it is the same hand that would push you any time. The plot is jaw-dropping and exhibits its emphasized artistry. The performance and chemistry, direction, audio scoring, and dialogues will surely make you shiver. Like a cat and mouse play, a cat is on its quest of hunting the mouse on an unpredictable battleground. It is brutal and bloody, so proceed at your own risk. Please sit back and hold on tight as we join the journey of our characters as they strive for trust, motivation, desire, and survival. All in a twisted way, as we hear the words, you only kill what keeps you alive. Jackie's family cabin leaves Jules in awe. She asks something but receives no response. Jules goes down but realizes her wife is nowhere to be found, so she calls for her as she goes out of the cabin. Later on, she finds Jackie standing back. We see Jackie with a gloomy face as she stares at the lake. The night falls and they couple by the fireplace. Jackie plays the guitar and sings a song with eerie lyrics, making Jules' face twist from admiration to confusion. But she continues to observe her wife, who appears to be drunk. Jules interrupts her by taking the guitar and putting it down before moving above and kissing her. But their makeout session halts when Jules senses a car pulling off outside. Jackie stands up, but Jules tries to stop her from meeting the stranger who calls her Megan, and then introduces herself as Sarah. Jules looks at her wife, confused. Jackie tries to explain all night. The following day, Jules discovers a boat upside down, but Jackie finds her. They ride the boat, and Jackie explains that she changed her name, since her birth name did not feel like her before. She gives her a necklace that has a locket of their picture, and then they make up. Jackie tells her about her dad, who taught her how to hunt. She mentions that she came face to face with a bear and killed the bear. She describes how it was still breathing and struggling, and how she watched the life drain from its eyes. Lastly, Jackie says her dad advised her only to kill what keeps her alive. Jules wakes up alone the next day with a voicemail from Jackie. She decides to ride the boat until she reaches a port that seems to be Sarah's. Sarah welcomes Jules to her place and offers her water. Jules discovers a picture of Sarah, Jackie, and Jenny. Sarah clears that Jenny has passed away. Due to confusion, she asks Jules if her wife didn't tell her anything about Jenny. Jules says she never did, and Sarah changes the topic. Jules faces Jackie and asks why she did not open up about Jenny, and why Sarah made it sound like she had something to do with their friend's passing. So Jackie tries to clear up if she met with Sarah, and Jules says she did. Jules looks for Jenny, and Jenny is nowhere in sight. Later on, they discover that Jenny drowned. The police investigate Jackie and find her innocent. They stroll around after comforting each other. Jules picks a pebble and throws it far. Suddenly, Jackie runs towards her and pushes her off the cliff before checking down if Jules is dead. Down there are big rocks, and one is beside Jules's bloody head. Jackie walks back to the cabin as if nothing happened. She burns off her cardigan, faces herself in the mirror, and practices her acting if ever the police come. Jackie heads back to find her wife's body at the place that she fell. Jackie cannot find the body and leaves only the blood-stained locket she gave her. She looks around with a deadpan expression while holding the necklace. However, Jules survives, full of blood and injuries. She hides as she hears Jackie call her apologetically. Then she looks up at her and witnesses that she is pretending to be worried. Jules covers her mouth in shock. It starts to get dark, but Jackie continues searching and Jules remains hiding, although she is getting weaker. But the ray of flashlight slightly passes by her. Jules says that she is done playing around and that she must be confused and probably thought she is a psycho. Then Jackie flashes the light to her face as she speaks, threatening Jules for she knows this place by heart, and that only means that she'll be able to find her. Jules is still able to wake up. On the other hand, Jackie prepares her weapons in the cabin. Jules struggles to fight death and returns to the cabin, searching for any communication device. She finds an emergency kit and swallows down painkillers, even sews her cuts on her own. She presses and tries to fix her fractures on her own and screams. Jackie hears it and drives towards the cabin and is still in hunting mode. She kicks on the bathroom, revealing only the materials Jules used to treat herself. Jules takes the boat from earlier to escape. Jackie runs to the lakeside and tries to shoot her repeatedly. Unexpectedly, Jackie uses another boat and catches up to her since she is physically healthy. Jules panics and tells her to stay away from her. 
She screams and picks up a paddle to defend herself. But Jackie could jump in her boat already, taking the paddle from her and throwing it to the lake. Jules takes the other, but Jackie finally pulls out her knife and threatens her. On the other hand, Daniel sees them from afar and asks them if everything's alright. Jackie pretends to be fine and exchanges greetings with Daniel. She ends up inviting the couple to dinner for the next day, but Jules suddenly suggests that they can do it tonight instead. Daniel agrees to the dinner invitation. The couple goes back to the cabin. Jackie puts her to bathe, as she explains that Jules should die by accident for her to get paid. Jules asks Jackie if she ever loved her, and she says no. She explains that she only felt sorry for her. Jules looks away in disappointment and tells her she won't get away with it, because she's going to scream so loud. Jackie aggressively pulls her by the hair and tries to drown her in the tub. Jackie tells her that if she ever made the slightest indication that something was wrong, she would kill her instantly. After the bath, Jules tells her that what she's doing now isn't the advice her dad meant. She tells Jackie that she is sick, but she can get her help. Jules even tells her that she understands and it must be hard for her to admit it. But Jackie responds that she hadn't told Jules about her first wife yet and the fact Jackie got married when she was only 19. Jules tries to sit back on the chair and listens. Jackie says that she and her wife went on a vacation, whom she mourned for afterward. Jackie glares at Jules and says that whatever game she's playing won't work here. That night, Sarah and Daniel went to the cabin. Jackie opens the door for them. During the dinner, Sarah asks Jules when she knew about Megan. Jules says it happened slowly for her and notices the little things until she notices the good and the bad. Jackie smirks as Jules subtly lets out her thoughts, saying that you can never know what really is going on inside their head, and that you'll take the leap and hope for the best, because she was in love. Jackie smiles at her again warningly. Later on, Jackie and Daniel chat about their partners. Jackie notices Jules approaching Sarah. Jackie excuses herself and peeks through the window. She finds her wife whispering to Sarah, and Sarah is looking so terrified. But the two saw her watching them. Sarah screams for Daniel to get away from her. But since he cannot hear her, Jackie takes it as an opportunity to slice his throat in front of the two. Sarah screams and drops on the floor. Jackie gets inside and points a knife at Sarah. Jules tells her to run, so she runs upstairs as Jackie chases and catches her. Sarah begs for her life, but Jackie stabs her in the stomach multiple times. She walks down to find the shaking Jules sitting on the sofa. Jackie picks her hand, forcing her to feel her racing heartbeat. Then Jackie makes her feel hers and asks her what Jules felt about it. Jules says it is steady. The living room is covered with curtains and cartons. Jackie asks Jules how deep she thinks the lake is, just in case she'll drown her there. Jackie wields an axe and chops Daniel's feet off. We'll see them in the lake as the day breaks. Jackie throws their bodies to the river. Jules tells Jackie that she didn't have to kill them, but Jules gaslights her and that she is to blame for their deaths. Jules asks about Jackie's parents if ever they did something wrong to her, that it made her like this, but Jackie says that they didn't, and they were happy. Jackie further responds by saying that it is nature, not nurture. Jackie plays the piano as she voices over, saying that she's free since she is not trapped by emotions and weighted down by guilt, unlike her. Jackie cleans up her cabin and weapons diligently with the help of ultraviolet light. Jackie gives her something to eat and reasons out that she needs her to have a full stomach, in case they do an autopsy. Jules stands up and looks up at the bear's head and pulls out a small box from behind. She gets horrified when she discovers that it consists of the same necklaces she was given, but without pictures in it, which means that Jackie intends to have more victims. Jules gasps and releases it to the floor when Jackie catches her. Jackie drives into the woods along with her. Jules says that she must be just so desperate to feel something for her to do this. Jules prepares a tranquilizer dart and finally stabs Jackie by the neck before jumping out of the car. Jackie pulls it from her neck and squares as she realizes what it is. Jules runs as Jackie chases her down until they reach the same cliff from before. Jules screams for help. Jackie walks towards her. She collapses to the ground before she reaches Jules due to the dart from earlier. Jules picks up the knife and peeks on her wife's face. Jules drives away and cries. She stops by a field and reminisces their memories together before the realization hits her. She gathers up the courage and drives back to where she left Jackie. To her surprise, she is nowhere to be found now, so Jules goes back to the cabin instead. Jules re-enters the cabin and fiercely searches for her, thirsty for revenge. Jules takes the rifle then sets up her laptop and plays loud rock music using the big speakers as she waits for Jackie. The music echoes through the woods. Jackie hears the music and goes back to the cabin after sunset. 
The next thing she knows is the rifle pointing at the back of her head. Jules orders her to move to the middle of the room and get on her knees. Then she hits Jackie's head with the back of the rifle when Jackie does not follow. Jackie tries to get into her head, and says that she'll end up killing herself when she pulls the trigger, for it is an antique that hasn't been fired for 50 years. Jackie stands up and tries to snatch the rifle as Jules is able to fire it, meaning that Jackie was lying. Jackie escapes, and Jules gets completely tricked by climbing up the attic when Jackie's just on the floor where the ladder is standing. The camera angles feel like it is taking you on tour around the dim cabin, with hints of movements just like the ceiling lamp swaying. The next day, Jackie is seen dragging an unconscious Jules to the cliff and kicks her to fall once again. Jackie calls the emergency hotline, finally able to get to act on what she rehearsed previously. Suddenly, her stomach aches, so she rushes back to the cabin, panics, then vomits. We see a flashback that Jules knew about her diabetes and the insulin she's being supported with. Jackie injects one to herself in the present, then feels something strange and sees the laptop on the table. She pulls it and clicks on the media player. It is revealed that Jules was able to record a video where she says that she wonders about how she feels right now as she notices some symptoms and that she should pay attention to what she puts in her body. Jules picks up a bottle and says that if hydrogen peroxide is injected into the bloodstream, it creates blood clots that move around the circulatory system until it reaches her brain. Because of that, she'll have a stroke and she would love to see the look on her face, wondering how much she'll be worth. Jackie picks up the tiny bottle of supposed insulin and tries to smell it. She screams and throws the bottle to the wall. She runs through the woods weakly, hallucinating, and sees a bear. Jackie sees her younger self trying to shoot the large animal, but it is her who feels it as she collapses to the ground and struggles to breathe. Her younger self watches her until life leaves her body. The movie shows Jules unmoved from her fall earlier, got her bones broken and full of wounds. Finally, the last frame is revealed to be her point of view of the tall trees from the movie's opening, and we hear a loud gasp before the ending credits roll in. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your fun for today.